Hi, I'm Monica from Patent Pool. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a mini quilt using our funky chicken applique, or as we like to call it in Australia, a chook. You can use any applique design that you like. We've got heaps on our website that are available for purchase as PDF patterns, and this is our funky chicken applique pattern. With our applique pattern, you have your design placement and you have your applique shapes. We're using a really bright, bold, patterned background fabric and I'm going to show you a trick to help you to make your applique shape stand out on a background like this. So to make my applique shape stand out, I'm going to use this lighter contrasting blue fabric and what I have done is using my design placement, I've traced the design placement out. I can easily see through this lighter fabric and traced everything out. And then what I've done is I have traced an outline around the edge. So that's about a quarter of an inch around the edge. And what that's going to do, it's going to, um, it's going to, you know, look like painting in between our mosaic pieces. And then the next thing I've done is I have just traced my applique shapes out onto fusible web. So cut around the edge of your applique shapes, iron the rough side onto the wrong side of your chosen applique fabrics. Cut out all the pieces and then we're going to iron them in position onto our lighter blue background piece. Here's our funky chook applique shapes ironed onto the blue background. Now cut out around the edge, leaving about a quarter of an inch space outside the chicken. Here's our piece cut out and the next step is to fuse this onto the background fabric. To do this we're going to use 505 spray and a cardboard box. Place your applique shape in the box with the wrong side facing up and spray with 505 spray. The box will prevent the overspray of glue on your work surface. Now position your funky chicken onto the background fabric and smooth in place. I'm now going to place medium weight tear away underneath just to stabilize my work and I'm going to zigzag around the outside edge of the applique shape using a matching colored blue thread. To sew, I'm using a matching coloured thread. I have an open toe foot on to provide clear vision. I'm using a size 75 machine embroidery needle and a small zigzag with a width of 2.5 and a length of 0.7, so it's not quite a satin stitch. Now the reason why I didn't use another layer of fusible web underneath is because that would make our applique quite thick and sometimes you might find that you've got some fraying edges but I just use this little tool which is called a tailor's awl or a stiletto and I just push those frayed edges in towards the shape and then I'm just going to stitch straight over the top of them. Now if you want to know more about machine applique around raw edges we do have another YouTube clip showing you all our tips for doing that. When the stitching is complete, remove the tear away. I've now layered my mini quilt top together with some batting and backing fabric and I've held those layers together with some basting spray. You could use basting spray or safety pins and now I'm going to head to the machine and free motion stitch around the edge of all of the inner pieces. I've completed the stitching. 
I free motion stitched around the spotty section of the wings and I outlined those shapes two times. I then just changed to my normal foot and I just did a straight stitch around the edge of each of these shapes. And then I came back and quilted nice and closely around the edge of our blue shape, just using a matching color thread. Now I think it's going to be a good idea to add a bit of extra quilting around the outside edge. So just following the lines that I have with this pattern, I'm going to stitch along say every fourth row, just using a mauve colored thread. I've completed the additional quilting. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this piece up and we want to make a little pointed end for this particular wall hanging. So to do this, first of all, mark it up first of all. So I used my ruler and I just made a distance of two, inch away, two inches away from the applique design. So just kind of judge that by eye, making sure that looks straight. So I marked my first line. Then from there, I'm just going to measure across so that I'm going to have two inches on the on the other side of the applique. So that's going to give me 14 inches from here. So I'm going to mark that line. I'll come across here. Mark that line there. And then as you can see, I've then just redrawn that line. Then I'm going to find half of that measurement. So it's 14 inches. So half of 14 inches is seven inches. I've made a little mark there. And then I'm going to measure from the bottom edge up and I'm going to make a mark that is two and a half inches on that side. And just making sure that we're nice and square on the other side there. Yep, we're square. So I'm going to measure up on this side, two and a half inches. And then I'm going to connect my two and a half inch line with the center line. That's going to give me my pointed bottom of our little wall hanging that we're making. Our mini quilt. And now I'm just going to trim that up with the rotary cutter. Binding. We're going to use the aqua color to tie in with our background here. I've cut two two and a half inch strips. I've joined it on the diagonal or 45 degree angle and then I'm just going to trim the seam back to a quarter of an inch and then I'll press that seam open. But just before I do that we're going to make some little tabs to have at the top of our little mini quilt. And so my tabs, I'm just going to cut them from the binding. I'll square off that end and I'm going to cut three little pieces that are six and a half inches. So that's just quite simply the width of your six and a half inch wide patchwork ruler. So I've got one, two and three. What I'm going to do with these is I will fold that in half so with a quarter inch seam allowance and then I'm going to turn those through to the right side. So I'll do that in a minute and then with my binding I will just continue pressing my binding strip in half with the wrong sides facing lengthwise just to have that prepared to sew around the edge of my little mini quilt. So once you have stitched your little tabs, we're just going to turn that through to the right side. I'm using a little loop turner here where I just hook that on and very gently turn that through. Just like that and then press the seam on the center back. So we have our three tabs and we're going to pin those onto the back of our wall hanging. And I'm going to start the outer ones. I'll make those three quarters of an inch away from the edge. So just like that. One on the other side. And then one in the center. So I will just fold that in half like that. Mark the center with a pin. 
and position my center tab there. Next step is to just stitch those in place just using a quarter inch seam allowance. The binding on our mini quilt is going to be fully machine sewn but I'm going to start by sewing it onto the back first of all. I'm going to leave a four to six inch tail starting on a side edge here and I'm going to sew it on with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'll just head to the machine and start sewing now. To sew the corner, stop sewing a quarter of an inch away from the corner. Take your work out from the machine. Spin your quilt and what we're going to do is fold the binding up so that there's going to be a 45 degree angle from the corner going across on your binding. And then we're going to fold it down. And when we fold down, we're going to make that level with the edge of the quilt and we can then continue sewing right from the edge of the quilt. At the bottom corner stop a quarter of an inch away from the point, take the binding out and then we're going to fold it so that it is folding in the same straight up direction and then fold your binding in the same direction so it's going to be running along the next edge. So there are lots of different ways to finish off your binding. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to the, my starting binding I'm going to run that so it's smooth along the edge. I'll then open it out and I'm going to fold that on a 45 degree angle. I'll then take my end binding and I'm just going to lay that over the top and I'm just going to continue sewing. Once I've got that caught I will just cut my ending binding just so that it's going to finish just a, a little bit past where that folded edge is there. And then I'm going to fold it over like that, tuck it in and continue sewing. Press your binding so that it's going to flip out from the back. We will be folding the binding over to the front. Also give our little join a press and you'll see that we're going to have some little pleats at the corners that's going to help us to make those nice mitres on the front of our work and flip over and we're going to pin the binding just so that it slightly covers the stitching line. And to pin the mitre, first of all, pin one edge over and pop a pin in the direction of the edge, the next edge of the quilt. That's gonna help you get started, but then you'll just need to have a little bit of a fiddle just to get a nice shape at the corner. So what I've done is I've folded the binding over just so that it covers the stitching line. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. Rather than straight stitching, I'm using a tiny zigzag stitch. And I'm stitching just on the edge. So normally you would use a matching coloured thread but I'm just using um, a light mauve colour just to contrast so that you can see the stitching. So here's our binding all sewn on with the zigzag around the edge. Now it's a little bit different. The reason why I use the zigzag is because if you used a straight stitch you have to be quite accurate as to where it's going to um, meet on the back of the binding so you don't have to worry too much with a zigzag. So it's purely just a suggestion. There's our tab so when you're sewing make sure that you just keep the tabs down so that when you turn it over to the front and it's complete then your tabs can come up like that and you can put a rod through there so that it's easy to hang on the wall. Now if you did want to hand sew your binding on what you would do is your tabs would go on first and you would actually stitch them onto the front 
and then sew your binding onto the front and then hand stitch it over to the back. So just for a little bit of fun to finish off our wall hanging, I'm going to pin this little bit of braid with the tassels just onto our bottom edge there. And I'm going to just straight stitch that on using a matching colored thread, sewing nice and close to either edge of the braid. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.